the first lesson is there is no plan. And if you talk to anybody who is who's interesting and you say, how did you end up doing what you're doing? Inevitably, anybody doing anything interesting, making a real contribution will say, it's a long story. When I was 14 and when I started, uh, I didn't have a plan, honestly. You know, I could say I had this all, all planned out, but you know, when I was 22, I had no more of a plan either. At the time, I was the chef at the River Cafe, and I was quite successful. And um, you know, it was always my goal from the time I became the chef at the River Cafe to open my own restaurant. Because in a lot of ways, I felt I could do it better, and I had, you know, you know, I had better ideas. You know, I had more inspiration uh, and that kind of thing. So there was really no like master plan of like, okay, this is what we're going to do next. Um, we 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 basically looked at opportunities. When I say we, you know, we have a team of kind of a uh, corporate group of, of people that look at opportunities and decide this is the right thing for us or not. The lesson to young people is really that, that if you think that this maneuver is going to lead to something else in two years, you don't know what's going to happen in two years. Number two is to think strengths, not weaknesses, which is very much aligned with the work of Marcus Buckingham and Martin Seligman. I, I learned early on in this business to trust your instincts. You know, and, and fortunately, I guess I've had good instincts because there's many times when I was told this won't work or this is not a good idea. And it's certainly not that I haven't made mistakes because I've made many mistakes. But for the most part, I think, you know, trusting my instincts have really kept us in a, in, a, in a good direction, you know, going forward. And that message still is not fully out there. The third lesson is it's not about you which is really my message to Gen Y, who often thinks that they can come into a company at age 22, they should be CEO in six months, yeah. work part-time, bring their dog. And you can spend millions of dollars to build beautiful restaurants, uh, state-of-the-art everything, great technology, but at the end of the day, we're in a service business, you know, and that's, that's one thing that I think, you know, the younger generation needs to understand about the restaurant business, that at the end of the day, you're a servant. You're cooking for someone, you're serving them, you're cleaning up after them. Um, and to be in this business and be successful, you better like doing that. You know, and some people don't really get that. They look at it as, I'm this professional whatever, whether it's a sommelier or, or a captain in the dining room or, or, or a chef in the kitchen. And, you know, we're about entertainment too. We're about making people happy. You know, to do that, we have to really be focused on what their needs are, you know, and we have to serve them. It's about the customer, it's about your client, it's about your teammate. For me it's important that, you know, they have that experience when they go on to open the next place or the next opportunity. And there are massive returns to that. It's also fun and engaging and you're making a difference, but it's not about you. Number four is a very important lesson. It's a lesson that I tell my own kids, and it's one of the signal discoveries of my adult life, which is persistence trumps talent. You know, I guess you'd call it tenacity. I don't, you know, I don't take no for an answer. If, if, I, if I truly believe it's good for us or good for the company or good for myself, then, you know, it's going to happen. The world is littered. You look back in, with, with, with very talented people who didn't persist. Yeah. And the people who end up doing really good things, making big contributions, are often, not always, people who are, you know, fairly talented but extremely persistent. There are massive returns to doggedness. Yep. Massive returns to doggedness. Uh, lesson five is to make excellent mistakes. People don't make mistakes. They, they basically, they come into work, they sit at their desk and they say, how can I not make a mistake today? And that's fine. That's a very good way to avoid making mistakes. You, chances, you have about a 90% chance of not making mistakes if you do that. You have a 0% chance of doing anything interesting. Uh, one of the great things about it is every day is a new day. So you can have the worst day of your life um, in, in a restaurant, you know, the worst service, you know, things can go wrong, whatever it is, and the next day it's a clean slate and you start over. And, and I think that's one of the great things about this business is, you know, you have that chance to just you know, correct it and, and, and get on with it, you know.
know, and, and, and hopefully not, you know, dwell on things that don't go well because we're always going to make mistakes. You know, this is a service business where there's so many moving parts that inevitably something's going to be missed. You know, the key is like not to do it, you know, not to make that mistake twice, to not, you know, dwell on things that, that aren't so great, but to fix it and go on. Uh, because in order to, to make mistakes, in order to do something valuable, you need to try things that don't work. And so there's a difference between stupid mistakes and excellent mistakes. Uh, and the final one, number six, um, is about what it means to be human, which is the, I think, the fundamental human yearning to leave an imprint. That's the sixth lesson, leave an imprint. Doing something in original uh, was really a big part of, you know, that, that beginning back 20 years ago, 22 years ago. You know, I still think that, you know, it's a long ways away before we can kind of claim an American cuisine as original because it's still so young, you know, and we pull inspiration from all over the world. When you're 28 with really nothing to lose and, you know, kind of uh, big aspirations, it was, for me, a lot of people say, well, how did you do that? Or, you know, you know, weren't you afraid to do that? And honestly, no, I didn't, you know, because at that point I had nothing to lose and it was really kind of, uh, you know, I was going to be the best, you know, I wanted to, you know, create something really special and, you know, I just look forward. That's kind of the way I am. I think we all want to do something that outlasts us. I think we all want proof that we were here. We all want to do something that says, but for my presence in this world, this would not exist.